This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. It's all behave with Arden Moore. This show that teaches you how to have harmony in the household with your pets. Join Arden as she travels coast to coast to help millions better understand why cats and dogs do what they do. Get the latest scoop on famous faces. They're perfectly pampered pets in Who's Walking Who in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails. Garner great pet tips and have a doggone fur-flying fun time. So get ready for the pause and applause as we unleash your all-behave host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome to the O Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Light, camera, whoop. Hey, our special guest today knows how to bring out the talent in dogs and cats. She has not one, but two deaf dogs who are Guinness World Record holders. Oh, uh, yeah. She has a pair of cats who also are very miaveless in front of cameras. Please give pause and applause to the multi-talented founder of the Ultimates, and I love this, Holly Wolf stars, Melissa Millet. Welcome to the show, Melissa. Thank you so much for having us. Hey, Bow Wow, we got so much to cover today. We're going to first go to the dogs and later to your fine felines. But um, I'm going to ask the pet pals out there this. When you hear the name Stephen King, I'm uh, betting a chill goes up and down your spine. He is the king of scare. Now, his book that he's had, Pet Cemetery, is now turned into another movie. I think it's a prequel. You'll tell us a little bit more, Melissa. Come on, you know that. Pet Cemetery. And Melissa's dog, I love the name, Jelly Bean is transformed into a zombie dog. And Jelly Bean's sharing the screen with some people we might know, you know, David Duchovny, Pam Greer, you know, Henry Thomas. Wow, that's awesome. So let's just dive in. Um, Melissa, Jelly Bean, you have a special name for him. You call him the what of dogs? I call him the Brad Pitt of dogs. (laughs) And why is that? Well, some animals just have that special something that the entertainment business is attracted to. And I remember when I was casting animals for a commercial, one of my animals that I represent said, I feel like I'm always, or my dog is always up for jobs against Jelly Bean. Maybe they're similar. I said, no, he's always chosen and shortlisted for everything. He just has that charisma that Brad Pitt must have. But he's deaf. Yes. So that might be now tell us the a little his backstory about how you and Jelly Bean got to be a team. I adopted Lollipop first uh, by accident. And he's a Boston Terrier, right? Yeah, Lollipop is a Boston Terrier. It's interesting. I I grew up with an aunt in the home that was deaf, but there could be some attraction there. But I, I just discovered with Lollipop that deaf dogs are incredible mm-hmm. and trainable. And so when I was looking specifically for a healer next, Jelly Bean came available and he also happened to be deaf. And I thought, that's not really a problem I've discovered. So I had him. He was born to a very good breeder and she couldn't find somebody to take him because people think that they're untrainable. She mm -hmm. She had to drive 10 hours each direction to find a rescue to take him. Are you kidding? Now, what is his breed? I think I know, but I want to make sure. He's a red healer. Okay. All right. So 10 hours one way, 10 hours back to a rescue. Then how did you and the rescue get together to be able to have you adopt Jelly Bean? I saw him posted on Facebook with a description, and it was what I was looking for, like friendly with people, confident in new environments, brilliant, um, also happened to be deaf. But they did admit he was one of the most intense cattle dogs that they had seen in rescue. And if anybody knows cattle dogs, (laughs) we're going here now, then we're going here now, we're going to go here. That's pretty intense. Is he anywhere around we can say hi to him? Yeah, he was. I'm just waving him over because he's deaf. Yeah, if you started calling his name, I would be laughing. 
Hello there, uh, Jelly Bean. Just want to say hi to you. So, Mr. Brad Pitt of the Wolf World, this is kind of cool. How did he land the role in the new Pet Cemetery? Tell us when it's airing and what's his character's name, if he has one. Oh, and also, I would ask that dog in the background to stop barking, but she's deaf. I have a new puppy that's deaf, so I now have three. Um, so, Jelly Bean, so actually, I did. The, I worked on the Pet Cemetery remake the 2019 as well with the cats so tonic that was just sitting beside me played church and when i shoot a movie i bring all of my animals because i love them and i don't want to be separated from them so i say hey if you want to hire me i'm showing up with 10 dogs total so <laughs> okay the got a chance to meet jelly bean and jelly bean played a scene as biffer in the first but they didn't find that it fit, so they didn't use that scene. There's a photo of him. So when they didn't use that scene, they still thought it was a great scene. So when they came back to shoot the prequel, the same producer knew that he wanted Jelly Bean to play Hendrix. Hendrix. And Hendrix is a zombie dog, right? Yes, he's a zombie. I've seen some little promo clips for the Pet Cemetery. I understand it, it was released in October, correct? In the movies? Yes. Okay. So he doesn't look as dapper as he does now. Tell us what Hollywood did to your dog to make him a zombie dog. Uh, I hired somebody who specializes in special effects, and he worked with the Dobermans from uh, Resident Evil. And I, he came in and he showed us coloration. So because we're responsible for coloring the animals, because I, I want to make sure that they don't get stressed with the process. So I'm controlling over that to make not that they would anybody would want to stress the animals but they're my animals and i can train for it so i had a meeting with him on what coloration should look like and we submit videos we used mud egg whites and chalk to make them look more rugged but you know a cattle dog doesn't have far to go you know they're pretty rugged looking as is they're a yeah. great fit for zombies so because he's deaf that actually was a benefit. Tell us why. Because I'm assuming there's a lot of noise going around on a movie set. How were you able to channel Jelly Bean to be Hendrix and be that spooky zombie, but following his cue, your cues? We had to do a lot of interesting camera angles. Okay. But in one of the scenes, you see that the characters, the actors come out of the car and they're supposed to call him and he's not supposed to respond. Oh, okay. That was a little easier than, <laughs> than it would be if we were training a dog to not respond or look to the calls. Perfect. And then I had all sorts of uh, training tricks and camera angle tricks to make sure that, um, that he was performing the behavior correctly. And there's a scene where he's creeping, walking slowly and creepy down the driveway, and they actually paint me out of the shot. Oh, cool. So is he like being a low crawl kind of a soldier move or what was his move? You know, the stock of the herding dog when they're close to the livestock. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I trained for the stock, but the challenging piece is that that's something that, that they'll do generally close up. And it's le it's more of a border collie thing than a cattle dog. You know, these guys, they do come in and, and bite. They will stock, but I had to get the stock 15, 20 feet away. Very long time. Now, are you disappointed that you got erased from Pet Cemetery? <laughs> well, that's it just makes it less fun to watch the movie with me because I'm like, I'm right there. I'm hiding behind the tree. I'm under his feet. And my daughter says, are you going to do this again? Hey, everyone. We're speaking with Melissa Millett. She's an amazing animal trainer. We actually have a connection we're going to talk about after the break. But we want you to check out the movie Pet Cemetery. But we're going to talk about her other dog, Lollipop, and the fact that they're both Lollipop and Jelly Bean are Guinness World Record holders. So you all know the drill. Sit, stay. We'll be right back. Time for a pause. For furry ones, actually, sit and stay. All behave. We'll be right back. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There is no other pet-related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. 
With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Odyssey, TuneIn, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. All Behave is back with more tail-wagging ways to achieve harmony in the household with your pets. Now, back to your fetching host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome back to the Old Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore, and we're talking with an, a renowned animal trainer. Her name is Melissa Millett. Check her out. She's at Ultimates and Holly Woof Stars. And we were talking about Jelly Bean doing pretty well in the movie. I mean, how was how did he relate? Uh, who got the bigger um, trailer, David Duchovny or Jelly Bean? Jelly Bean got the bigger trailer because he had bring nine brothers and sisters oh he's quite a diva he brought an entourage i think i do travel with the animals in a trailer when they work long days i make it part of our negotiation because i don't want them to just sit in a kennel all day waiting to work and i don't want them out on set becoming overwhelmed so i bring a motor home so that he can be as if he's in his own home or living room rest and then come out ready to work i like it but now we all know he had a bigger one than david Duchovny. He's spoiled. Yeah, he's spoiled. <laughs> so how was the cast with him? You also have, uh, you know, Pam Greer. I love her. And Henry Thomas. Oh, Pam Greer was hands down the coolest. She was so really? cool. Such an animal lover. Such a cool lady. And she was fe just phenomenal to work with. And I I wanted more out of him. Actually, I looked at the scene. It was amazing. But I know what I can train at home. And, yeah. and I didn't feel that he had performed at the time how I thought he could until I watched the movie. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. But <laughs> I thought, it, oh, wow, that's the best scene. But Pam was really supportive. She was like, no, it looks amazing. I'm a dog lover. You tell me what you need. And David was really cool as well. That's but cool. he had a scene with David that was cut. You said there was a part in the movie that got clipped out with um, a scene with uh, David Duchovny's character and Jellybean. Tell us about that. So originally, Jelly Bean didn't start out as the zombie dog. He started out as a regular dog. But they ch sometimes change things as they watch it later and say, you know, that doesn't make sense. And I agreed with the changes. So he came out um, where Judd and Bill Baderman met in the town. David Duchovny plays Bill Baderman. So he was belonging to Bill Baderman, and he came out and met in the town. And oh. I was sad they cut. I always want more time to see the dog, <laughs> even if it didn't fully make sense. Did you know that Jackson White that played Judd is the daughter of Married with Children? Oh, Kathy Seagal or whatever? Really? Yeah. There's yeah, a yeah. small world, isn't it? Isn't it? He was so, great with dogs. Moving on. So what about Lollipop, your Boston Terrier? Where's Lollipop? Is Lollipop anywhere around? See, she's having a sleep and I have to wave them over. So Lollipop is my, she's giving me the, she's stiffing me. She says I'm napping. Uh, Lollipop is my I'm doggy diva. Yeah. She's like, excuse me. I'm comfortable. When a deaf dog doesn't want to respond. I don't know if you know this. They simply just look away and pretend they didn't see you. And it's really funny to just see your dog sitting there looking away, ignoring you. Anyway. Back to the paw. Cause I really can't listen. <laughs> I didn't see you. It's not my fault. Lollipop is everything that everybody would want in a dog. She's just gentle and sweet, and she constantly tries to do the right thing. And she was my first deaf dog, eight years old. And uh, how did you come to get together? Actually, I ended up getting in a car accident, and I lost a Boston Terrier in the car accident. Oh. It was very sad. And her breeder, knowing that she was a breeder and loving the, the Boston Terrier breed, somebody said, this little Boston Terrier is deaf. She couldn't sell. And she's been given to the county pound. And she said, I know somebody that would like this dog. She asked me if I wanted her. And I said, I had already gotten another puppy. This was only about six weeks later. But you know, when you're in love and you. Yeah. Place. But I, I saw a dog that I wanted. And I said, oh, I just got a puppy. 
but bring her to me. I can foster her. I'd love to. And I can find somebody to adopt her. She brought her to me. I laid eyes on her. And I said, that's my dog. There's no way that dog's not going anywhere. So I guess you're not my doginess, right? <laughs> yes. You can have more than one. Okay. So I understand that Lollipop and you were on America's Got Talent. Yes. You did yeah, pretty we, well. Yeah. With my Bengal cat sashimi. We did get four yeses. They only aired pieces of our audition, but they were phenomenal, a phenomenal team. And we need to brag a little bit. Um, yeah. You've got some dogs and cats that are in the Guinness World Records. And I have to share this. Do you know I had a dog that's in the Guinness World Record oh, book? Cool. One of my little dogs, Cleo, was an original member of the SoCal Surf Dogs. And about 11 years ago, we got a modified surfboard and we got a bunch of dogs on that board with a surfer in the witnessing of the Guinness people in San Diego. And what whoever dogs finished made it. So we had a boxer, we had a golden retriever, we had all these dogs. And my little terrier mix, Cleo, surfed all the way to shore with all the pack. There were 17 dogs that made it. And we raised $72,000 for the San Diego Humane Society. So that's my only, th we have uh, we have records together. What do you think? Wow, $72,000. That's incredible. But I have her surfboard now mounted above my backyard office. So I always salute Cleo every time I go to work. But tell us about, you got five records? Is that right? Yeah, five records. Let's do it. Do the, Let's go run down. Boom, boom, boom. So first, uh, Guinness reached out to me and said, we love what your work. I want to see what would you submit for a record if, you know, if you're going to submit directly to us. And I thought about some really cool, unique submissions. I looked at my dogs. I have 10 dogs and my deaf dogs had the strongest tricks. Oh my gosh, really? Yeah. Wow. It, you know, it wasn't that they were the, a novelty act. It was just, you know, it's exciting to have a record. I'm going to submit my best stuff. And it just happened to be my deaf dogs. My first three records were bounce passes of a basketball with my red healer, okay. where we bounce the back and forth as if we're dribbling to each other. Yeah, let's do it. Ready? You bounce, I'll catch. Go ahead. Yeah, like, yeah. bounce, catch, pass. <laughs> yeah, okay. really cool. Um, the second was the fastest five meter pushing of a ball under his paws. Okay. <laughs> and then the last was my favorite trick of all time, the Bengal cat and the Boston Terrier riding a scooter together. The fastest five meters on a scooter. So you that know. is lollipop and sashimi, right? Lollipop and sashimi. Okay. What's the other two records? After those records were submitted, I, I was contacted by the Guinness World Records show in Italy, which is Low Show de Record, or however you pronounce that with an accent. And I was asked if I would travel with the animals to Italy. And I, so I took lollipop and sashimi because they fit under my seat. And we acquired the fastest 10 meter on a scooter and live in the, in the studio audience, which was incredible. It looks sort of like America's Got Talent. It's a massive lead wall, all screen. It's an amazing for a cat to travel to Italy. And Lollipop acquired the most distance accumulated in one minute on a 16 foot tightrope. Wow, that is <laughs> whack. Hey, we're going to dive in a little bit deeper, but we're going to take a quick break. So sit and stay. We'll be right back. Time for a walk on the red carpet, of course. All Behave will be back in a flash right after these messages. Molly, here's your dinner. <laughs> Zeus, that's not your food. Don't let that happen to your precious cat. Elevate your cat's eating experience with the Cat Tree Tray. The Cat Tree Tray keeps your cat's food off the floor and conveniently located on the cat tree. It's the perfect way to eat. It's a beautiful wrought iron tray that easily attaches to your cat tree and keeps dogs and other critters out of your cat's dish. A must for multi-pet households. There's a 6-inch tray for large bowls and a 4-inch tray for smaller bowls. Purchase your Cat Tree Tray today. Go right now to CatTreeTray.com. That's CatTreeTray.com. C-A-T-T-R-E-E-T-R-A-Y.com. Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. 
Hi, this is Joyce DeWitt. You may remember me from Three's Company, inviting you to have the good sense to tune in to the adorable, amazing Arden Moore on Behave on Pet Life Radio. We're back from the lot. Just checked the paper and we had a record showing at the box. The letterbox, that is. Now back to Obehave. Here's Arden. Welcome back to the Obehave show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Hey, you know, our special guest today is Melissa Millett. She's the founder and head trainer at the Ulta Mutts and Holly Wolf Stars. And we've talked about your dogs knowing their cues in front of a camera. I want really spotlight your pair of talented cats. Uh, I know people think you can't train a cat, but you've got a couple of fine felines who hit their marks in movies, television, commercials. And I am talking about the purring pair of Shashimi and Tonic. So glad we can keep going because I love that you are proving people a little bit. You're giving the record straight. You can train deaf dogs. You can train cats. Mm-hmm. Can you find world peace? <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> Cats and dogs together. It's that's yeah. pretty close. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, what is your message to people? You helped me years ago. Let's talk about it. We have another connection. My orange tabby, Casey, best known now as pet safety cat Casey, is a certified therapy cat. And he, I will argue, is the busiest safety cat in the world. I teach pet first aid for you with my terrier mix Kona and Casey on Zoom, in person, and Casey has never met a strange place or a strange person. So bring us back. You were just meeting him when he was getting his start, and you actually helped him. Do you remember what you trained him to do? I remember that was my first in-person cat class. Okay. And I was thinking, what the heck was I thinking? We got to have a whole bunch of cats. Are they going to get along? And they did amazing. And Casey, what behavior did he? He was doing the I think you did the paw touching, yeah. That's right. The high five. was it the high five? Yeah, and he's a lefty like me. <laughs> Amazing. Does that make him a south south paw? Yes, yes. But I don't know if you remember him, but he's he's not shy. Yeah, he was tail high, absolutely super confident in a dog event center. Um, with there was there was dogs present and other cats present, which is almost the most impressive. That's cool. So tell us about Shishimi and Tonic and, and what kind of cats they are, what some things people might be amazed that they can do. And they're in front of a camera and they're like, I love it. Sashimi is my first. She's just incredible. I mean, even going back to this trip to Italy, she is an adventure cat. You know, she was excited to be there. She was waiting at the door of the green room, ready to go, sleeping, watching me. When is she going to wake up? I want more cooking. Unbelievable. And so she's actually mostly my trick cat, but she's coming out in a new series on AMC called Orphan Black Echoes. She's got a short role, Jennifer. Uh, so that's really cool. She had the time of her life and there's a bit of intense conversation, which didn't bother her in the slightest. Well, what's this orphan? What is it called? Orphan? Orphan Black Echoes. And what's that all about? They actually, it's a spinoff series because there was an original series called Orphan Black and it's about clones. And in in this one, it's taking place in 2025. Okay. That's pretty cool. And uh, what's uh, Shishimi's role? What does she have to do? She's got a very short role in that as Jennifer. So she's just sitting (laughs) sitting there looking amazing. Somebody's pet cat. Okay. Elegine, of course, has a huge role in that because, you know, he's got his own whole episode where he's a main character because he's the Brad Pitt of dogs. And Oh, nobody- that's right. Okay. So he's in it too. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah. That's, that's good. We keep it all in the family. But what about uh, Tonic? What's Tonic's claim to fame? Tonic, he's more of an actor. So while Sashimi's my trick cat, Tonic is my actor. He excels. He knows he's going to get paid more. Although he has gone viral, you know, with about 6 million views on TikTok. And Instagram, look, Sashimi's sitting on my lap now. She knows we're talking cats. Yeah. <laughs> Ta- Tonic is the, one of the main pet cemetery cats. He's the good cat, not the evil. He's a okay. backup for the evil when you can see the back of his head, but he loves to work too much. He just looks so joyful. That what kind he, of things can he do? Tell us what specific things. Well, one more interesting thing. He, Tonic's also coming out in theaters. It's a horror slasher. 
And Tonic is in a heavy scene. He worked on and off for 10 hours that day without quitting. Wow. And did not, he had a blast. And I don't, I haven't seen the movie. I get to see it on the screening on Wednesday. But the, somebody from the film called me and said, hey, what's the cat's name? We didn't get the cat's name. We want to add his name to the credits because it was such a small role. But when they screened the film, people were like, this cat. Apparently, people really connected and thought it was hilarious. So they wanted to add his name to the credits which I thought was hilarious. Years ago, there was a movie called Breakfast at Tiffany's. Yes. And the cat's character was named Cat. Oh, okay. And the cat became very famous. And I don't know his given name, but I'm just saying Tonic is kind of the 21st century of Breakfast at Tiffany's. I'm sorry, Shishimi, I don't mean to insult you, both of you. What can you say to people to show that you can train a cat? I always say you just kind of make it their idea. With cats, you never force, you always negotiate. What what kind of tips can you give people? Because I think cats deserve to learn things and be enriched. I think you nailed it first. Always make it their idea. And what, saying no pressure training where they come to me. So okay. teach focus where I don't ask for focus. I stand there and if you look at me, I pay. Okay. And I add that. And then I do more fundamentals. I would practice luring and reward all sets. I would practice targeting. I would practice having them look at you and follow you around the room. So we're first, we're just rewarding interest and engagement. And what kind of rewards are you giving them? I like to buy a bunch of different cat traits to see what their favorites are. Okay. So I likes the, there's a, something called Inaba chicken and, oh, yeah. comes, you know, soaked in chicken broth or crab broth. Mm -hmm. He's mad at me if he doesn't get exactly that. Okay. Some my my orange kitten likes temptations. Sashimi likes meats of any kind. She loves meat. <laughs> and then, of course, have you seen those lick sticks? I use them in my class teaching pet first aid for Casey and Kona. And I tell people, if you have to ever pill a cat, check with your vet. Make sure you can crush the pill. Crush the pill. But take one of those liquid yummies and make like a paint strip mm -hmm. and then sprinkle on the little bits of the pill. And watch your cat just devour it. You never have to wrestle a cat to give a pill. What do you yeah. think? No, I love that. And my vet actually keeps those in her office as well. So you got good treats. You start with luring. How do you know with a cat it's time to you push the mark? You need to give them a cat nap. When starting, many cats have less duration and are less interested in repetition. It's something that we work up to. Okay. Um, so I would do, you know, five minutes to start. Also, as I'm training the cat, I'm looking at what does the cat like to do? And when you, you teach behaviors that the cat likes, I mean, I'm looking at my Bengal cat. She loves to leap. She's movement oriented. So it, her tricks are based on movement. Good. Okay. And what about for your other cat? What's that cat's go-to? Tonic is very calm. So I taught him to down and roll over, okay. balance on my feet, walk from foot to foot. Um, he walks, he puts his feet on front feet on top of my feet. We walk together, but the movement oriented Bengal cat is weave through my legs, jump into my arms, rebound off my leg, things that are movement based. That's Shishimi right there, right? Yes. Okay. And I'm looking at Shishimi on your right shoulder and you have a cat that is a BFF, a best feline friend, right? Look at this cat. The cat's body language is love you, love you, love you. How do you guys get in sync? That's funny that you caught that because I'm telling you what, this cat spoons with me every night. I type, I try to type on the computer and she's nudging my hand as I type. She is obsessed with me and I, she's just an awesome cat. A lot of what I do is based on, I do work a lot on trust. You know, oh, I'm, yeah. I try to make everything positive. Like what you're saying with the pill. You know, I, do, I don't want to be shoving pills down her throat. If I take a moment and I find a way to give give her a pill in a way that's not aversive, then she trusts me. So figuring out how I can make my interactions as low stress if they're vet things or things that we have to do or fun as possible. I love it. We've just got a few minutes left. I want people to have your backstory. I mean, why aren't you a nuclear physicist or maybe a, a chef on a Gordon Ramsay restaurant? What got you in with pets? And tell us a little bit about your how you came to be. I started out training my own dog in class because it, she was a young and rambunctious Rottweiler. She needed training. I really enjoyed it, took to it. And then I started teaching classes 
And I loved it so much. I just loved it. I would teach trick or my dog's tricks every night, all night after class. Nice. And I had my, sh and then I created a show by accident to promote. This is in Canada, right? In Canada. Yeah. Near Toronto. And then after I created the show to, tr to promote my business, I got a, an agent called on the first day and I thought, wow, we can, we can do this as a career. This is crazy. Right place, right time. I'm not sure I would have thought about it after. And from there, I was discovered into the world of film when, when they were looking for a cat trainer. There's not a lot of you out there, are there? No, there's not. It it's, takes a lot of patience, I think. So in some of these movies, obviously, um, I don't see Shishimi wearing a gold-plated diamond necklace. So it's not all about the money, is it? You're not, you may get rich, you may not, right? But you're enriched. That's right. I think people assume that those in the film industry are driving around in Ferraris, but the work is spotty and the, the pay is separated between animals. So if you have a big job, there's going to be five cats to play the role. Oh, there you go. So what's your parting message you want to share with people and how can people follow you? I would say we have a big message for working with disabled dogs that they do make incredible pets. I have five disabled dogs on our show. My sister has a deaf dog as well. And I have a puppy that has spina bifida and she okay. is an incredibly inspirational little dog. We want them to know not to overlook these incredible pets. When it comes to cats, these friends love to work as much as dogs. It's a great way to provide mental stimulation for animals that spend a lot of time indoors. So consider training your kitty cat that you have at home. How do we find you? You can find me on Facebook or Instagram. The Ultimates is uh, my favorite place to share amazing videos and programs that you can get involved in if you're looking for cat training. I love it. And everybody, please give a pause and applause to Melissa Millett. I mean, she's the real deal. And so are her pets that are working pets. They're living full lives. They're not just snoozing on a couch. I also want to give a shout out to my producer, Mark Winter. He is the executive producer of Pet Life Radio. Guess what, guys? Obehave is the longest running pet podcast on the planet since 2007. I'm not telling you my age, but that's pretty cool. Uh, it's not a Guinness World Record yet, Melissa. But I also want you to follow me on my YouTube channel, Arden Moore. And I'm big on safety, cats and dogs. Please check out Pet First Aid for you. So until next time, this is your free host, Arden Moore, delivering just two words to all you two, three, and four-leggers out there. Oh, behave. Coast to coast and around the world, it's all behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. All behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.